Hello again traders, right, um, uh, I hadn't intended to make this video, in fact I haven't, I've sort of um, given myself a, a break or tried to give myself a bit of a break from Twitter, I am actually going to have a longer um, proper break, vacation, whatever you want to call it, um, although that has been delayed a little bit. So. Um, as such, I hadn't expected to be making any new videos, I hadn't really expected to be studying charts and tweeting so much as I have done just uh, this last week, but um, it's just a short delay and then hopefully I am having a decent break until um, sort of the winter time maybe, uh, because I do love being outside in, in the summer, although we've got a rainy, sat rainy Sunday today. So... Um, just a quick recap, really, because hopefully this will be sort of the um, the last video on my uh, channel, the most recent for a while, unless I get uh, any inspiration. And as such, hopefully um, this may uh, sort of um, be of interest to newer people to my stuff. So basically... Um, if you know what I do on Twitter, you'll know that I everything evolved around the 2B reversal. The 2B reversal was what um, identified, really, the, the, the absolute precision that price um, uh, acts on highs and lows of particular bars. This is a bit of a convoluted. I've just picked this. This is out of the blue. I was just studying cryptos and wondering what time of day they move. Hence that uh, that line there. But I'll go on to that in a moment. But uh, and that literally, I've just put that on my charts about half an hour ago. Um, but this is a bit of a two B going on here. You've got swing one, swing two, and then swing three. Um, potentially two B long. So this would be VIX. Uh, trigger bar effectively you would draw a low on the low of that and then the bar that breaks that low would be the sort of poke bar I think that's what he calls it there that's the low of swing one so this bar is the poke it goes pokes through that low and then the high of that bar is where Vic would consider his new trade and <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make is that high is precise to the micro pip. Nine one is the last digit. One is the last digit there. So, um, and you will see price hit that and hit it and hit it and hit it and and it might fail to close through it and it will collapse. But if it closes through it, and Vic never mentioned the close. This is uh, something I added to it. If, um, after hours and hours, thousands of hours of study and trading them, or trying to trade them, should I say. Um, a close through it meant it was more likely to continue up. I mean, it's just one of those observations I made. So, that then led me to realise the importance of these micro pip levels, that 9. If it fails to break and close above the 9, you're um, high, less likely to go long, than if it uh, closes above it. What is also interesting, and I don't mention this very often, is that if this was, say, a daily chart, and it gapped up above that the following day, or in fact any any chart, doesn't really matter, an H4 may test, 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 and then for some reason gap above it, and then the new bar gaps above it, and then uh, goes down, that I would consider a break to the long side, because price has pushed up, and effectively closed above there and then pushes down. So gaps um, are considered to be uh, a close above, a breach of the level and continuation. Don't mention that very often, but I did notice that and it is a thing. So um, then we evolved the 3CR because of the levels, the way price reacts to these levels, that low there, it will bounce and bounce and bounce occasionally, then finally close below it and that then becomes the the um, uh, poke bar, as it as it were. See the one or the other trigger or poke. I never remember. So that's the two B. That is how the three CR evolved in a nutshell. And now on to the whole point of this video, which is is to say 
that, you know, originally I used to try and trade just these patterns. Then I became aware of, uh, of uh, things on charts that um, I was oblivious to for the best part of 15 years, which was uh, times of day to trade like um, uh, the uh, cable fix in the afternoon about four o'clock in the UK afternoon they fix the FX prices that's one I don't mention very often cable fix is a, tr is a thing um, Billy TT has a um, ORB um, opening range bar of 8 to late 15 uh, Billy TT on Forex Factory and then I started to open a whole new um, sort of plethora of options to trade various opening ranges, various bar types, and so on and so forth. Then along came uh, the um, dashboards. They're only a recent thing too. Uh, things that look like this. And um, now I'm developing numerous ways, numerous, numerous ways to trade them every, uh, every almost every day it seems, at least every week, getting a new way to trade these dashboards. So as you can see, this is currently an FTMO uh, demo um, terminal um, and I'm working out for a friend of mine really, but I probably will trade it myself, the best way to um, beat their challenges as it were in the least dangerous way, stress in the most stress-free way the least stressful way without over trading and one of them would be to uh, split the different um, strategies that we have into segments as it were so you know for example I could trade the gold Asian range play because we know gold although gold is oh, has gone a bit volatile now but for for months and months and months and months gold had an Asian range of roughly 90 pips I, noticed, I checked it the other day, it seems to be running at about 11-1200 pips in the Asian range, but that may well change back again. So, But, you know, if you open your charts at 2-3 o'clock in the UK AM and you see gold has only made 50 pips um, or 500 points or whatever it is, then there's a good chance it will continue to make its 90 or 1000 uh, or 90 or a 110 pips or whatever you want to, or 900 or 100, uh, 1,100 points, whatever you want to call it. But regardless, it's a 90 to 110 pip range. If it's sat at 40 at 2 in the morning, there will probably be a reason for that, something like uh, Australian um, interest rate news or something overnight, uh, and then it will take off. But we can trade the, um, the consistency of that range. Sometimes it won't. But we can use the 3CR and we can use the, our momentum, the RSI histo momentum and the TMA slope that I love to work out how to trade that. So that's one whole strategy. Then you've got the pre-Frankfurt open strategy that I would normally trade um, as, a, as a rule each day. Then you might have the um, Billy TT strategy. You might have the um, H4, 6am H4 big bar strategy. Let's pretend this is an H4 chart here. And uh, we've, we're looking at that huge great bar there. And we're, you know, obviously stocks are different because you've got gaps and all sorts going on. They're a bit of a mess. But um, if this was a f FX pair, we would expect that to potentially pull back, especially if it was hitting into supply in this instance. So that's the H4 and that's 6am and that's another really, really good thing I look for. So I've got my alarm clock on the phone or whatever going off at all these uh, particular times of day so that I can watch H4s intraday, so I can watch H1s and M30s for those uh, what I call the um, uh, wick formation trades and that one is similar to this if I come in and see an H1 that has closed into supply with no wick on it it is really really quite rare that you find currency pairs with no wick so 
we talked about this probably two, three weeks ago, is that I will look at it 15 minutes before the hour, and if it's smashing into supply, sorry, um, running up with a big candle prior to the hour end, then I will uh, short it um, anything up to five, 10 minutes before the hour, um, and uh, with a tiny stop above, and that's another play in itself. So, so far we've got gold Asian range play, we've got the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the 6am uh, play, we've got uh, H4 play rather, we've got the hourly big bar plays, you can apply hourly um, uh, and uh, M30 as well, you can apply that to M30, you've got inside bar plays, you've got, I uh, can't see any here, oh yeah, you've got doji there, so a break of that line, draw on that line there, and that is another opportunity, excuse me, this is a massive battleground where price is pushed up, price is pushed down, forget it that it's a monthly chart, but you know, put this on a hypothetical H4 chart or an H1 chart, it's going to go one way. And if we get momentum triggers and we get all the usual signals, 3CRs and so on, and on the one minute, five minute charts, then that is likely, and then obviously supply and demand above, the highs and lows of that, that is likely the direction that you will be able to scalp five, six, ten pips, whatever. So all of these different methods, then we've got um, Don introduced us to the mother bars. I've known about mother bars, of course, but uh, it's only right and proper that if, if uh, a new idea is uh, brought to my attention uh, that I'm studying recently, then, uh, you know, give credit to where credit's due. So thanks for that, Don. So you've got mother bar trading, and uh, and Don has his three, um, or three or four levels of uh, 100%, the size of the mother bar, uh, expand that... Uh, that size by three segments, quadrants, whatever, and um, he likes to target those. So, uh, and it's fascinating how all of these different uh, strategies um, all tie in together. So then you've got the strat, all the various strat um, uh, setups as well that can be traded using uh, what I call my precision entries based on momentum and 3CRs and all that lot on multi time frames, so that's another one. Uh, then you've got um, sort of the the middle of the day, which is in the UK 10 um, a.m. That's a big turning point. You've got um, all the different sessions, the Asian session high and low, breaks, tests, retests, I really like the retests of the Asian session low, that uh, high rather. If it breaks above it, it quite often comes back and tests it. If we get a valid uh, set of triggers to trade that, that's another opportunity to watch for. So the whole point of this video is to say that, you know, don't concentrate on a trader's strategy if it um, is one a day. Because the point I made on Twitter was that, and I've done this, I've lived this, is that you can get so worked up about that <clears throat> one trade that happens, say, for example, Billy TT's 8 to 8.15 trade, that, you know, he, he trades that and then packs up and goes away. He has a way to trade it if it doesn't do exactly what he says, and from memory... He takes five pips, you, you draw the line on the 15 minute bar, uh, zero, eight o'clock to late 15, and then he will trade the breakout uh, for five pips above, for five pips below. And I forget where he puts the stops, I think it's the other side of the bar. And the bar has to have a certain size as well. So there's loads and loads of strict rules, um, and loads and, uh, and it can overwhelm you, um, although, you know, as a beginner trader, uh, you can learn the rules and that's it and trade it exactly how he says. He has a way to get out of bad trades as well uh, by hedging and doubling and all sorts of things. But it's complicated and it doesn't need to be complicated. A reversal on a big bar, stop above the high, take your pips and run away. You know, here, here. Um, it doesn't need to be so complicated 
All respect to Billy TT because he opened my eyes and he is an ex-professional prop trader um, along with Lem and along with Claudia One who are all fantastic traders that uh, are on his thread and you will learn there is a absolute plethora of information on that thread that is well worth reading about. Lots of breakout trades and different strategies, lots of EAs going flying about the place as well so it's a really interesting thread. So anyway... Um, so we've got uh, ORBs, we've got all the big candles, we've got little candles, we've got dojis, we've got, you know, in, inside bars, I mean, by little candle. We've got wick fills, we've got wick formations, we've got um, later day trades, end of day ADR, average daily range. So if you've got a massive move like that, uh, towards the end of the day, and let's say the ADR on this is 100, and it's sat at 130 up here, then it's highly likely if you get a reversal signal, a dropping off of momentum to the long side and all the usual stuff, uh, divergence as well, remember, we, that's a whole new strategy on its own. We could get a divergence um, come into the market of these big candle highs and lows. Then those are tradable strategies on their own. So let's say, for example, we're trying to um, fulfill the um, FTMO uh, 50,000 challenge or 25k challenge or whatever it looks scary if you've got to make one trade and you've got to get your 10% and all that malarkey but if you've got five or ten or two dozen different strategies they in my opinion can be treated as a single uh, each one can be traded as a single strategy so don't trade them back to back in my opinion you know just uh, have a trade maybe the Asian session gold if you're up and about uh, trade that have a sleep which is what I actually do and then get up uh, uh, set the alarm for uh, 6 a.m. or if I can't be bothered not bother at all and go for the 10 a.m. candle close um, you know it's so flexible <clears throat> and if you're doing it between work you know a full-time job then you can just set your alarm to suit you lunch hour tea break or whatever you have if you um, like I do I've got uh, various things I do during the day lovely break lovely walk outside deal with animals and things like that and then uh, come back and it feels like a whole new trading day and then something else with the uh, FTMO that I'm loving is uh, as you can see these stocks I'm setting myself up now to uh, um, play around with stocks I've set myself up some different templates I set myself up uh, an intraday one oops no that's not uh, that's the the um, uh, cryptos put a few templates together over here what have I set myself up I've set myself up a stock dash for intraday so because stocks are um, you know you have your um, outside of market hours and stuff like that the candles are a nightmare so what I'm realizing because this is a relatively new whole new strategy for me and it, it is that I love it I absolutely love it it's almost like two days trading I've got my FX uh, different stuff and then in the afternoon it doesn't matter four or five o'clock in the afternoon you don't have to be there for the open these all settle themselves down and um, we will see the M H one. I can't. I don't like. I haven't really studied the H four to be quite truthful. With you, and this is new to me as well. But it stands to reason for me that if I've got an H four, uh, sorry, an H one good looking chart, then an M thirty good looking chart. You know, set of candles. I'm talking about a three CR or whatever. And you know, suppose we had a three CR down a pullback, then I would be expecting to short this. We can see. We've clearly got a downtrend in place on Tesla. High, low, lower, high, lower, low pullback. So it stands to reason that this should um, potentially give me a nice short trade for five or six pips. That's all I need. And uh, that in itself is like a whole different day's trading. So there we are. We've got at least two trades uh, that we can safely say we're not over trading using. And we are um, treating like two individual strategies which doubles our chance of getting through an FTMO challenge without over trading in my opinion so make a plan you know use all the, the tools we've got in our toolkit and I've only mentioned half of them you know 
and then um, uh, then uh, trade like a machine. I've talked about this. You know that that is all I'm worried about. I couldn't care less what's happening in the world. I mean, obviously, it's very sad, the wars and things like that. But all I'm interested in is what these candles are telling me. Couldn't care less what's happening with the uh, interest rates. Couldn't care less what's happening with uh, recessions and things like that. Although it does make a difference on the longer term charts, of course. But on the short term stuff, all I'm interested in is three candle reversals and RSI momentum on multiple time frames. That's it. So that's it. That's a long-winded video. I apologise for the length of it and the uh, the to and fro. And I've probably forgotten half of the stuff I wanted to put into this video. But I think I've covered a couple of dozen possible trading scenarios. And also remember that these methods work the same way on every time frame, on every instrument. Some are more volatile than others, so some deserve uh, to be... Um, kept it on the back burner until you've got more experience some are absolutely uh, fantastically um, slow as it were you know someone mentioned UJ is a fantastic pair to play I, I've started looking at it more and uh, it's safe as it were you know tighter stops less risk and that's what um, trading is all about uh, reducing your risk risk management is the most important thing. Finding trades is pretty much secondary. So thanks for watching and uh, have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Bye for now and green pips to everyone.